Rolling out this week is a brand new home screen for Power Apps. Now you've probably already seen it, other people have talked about it, yay, I know. But what I wanna do is I need to help you be the smart person about it, right? As I dug into it this week, there's a lot of little nuances, right? There's like, hey, why are these things disabled? Why do some people see this message? Where do other people see this message? And how do I do the things I used to do? So instead of this being a walkthrough of a bunch of screens that are supposed to be used by beginners that have wizards, we're not gonna explain how to use their wizards, we're going to help you guys connect the dots, right? So hey, how does this button compare to this button, right? Are they the same thing? Do they do different things? So we're gonna translate. Two, we're gonna explain how to do things you've always done. And three, the most important one, I'm going to walk you through why you see these different messages about different environments, why some things are grayed out, how to get them ungrayed out, and just help you guys be the smartest person in the room when it comes to these features so you can start helping your end users when they call you up like, hey, why can't I use blah, blah, blah? You'll say, oh yeah, in Shane's video, I learned blah. Anyway, sound like fun? Let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here on the desktop, I've got this new home screen up. Let's be honest, it is beautiful and it is super easy to use for new people, right? Like this is a big win. Good job Microsoft for building this thing. But a bunch of stuff has changed. So let's talk about it. Now, the first thing you're saying is Shane, I don't have this yet. Well, it's rolling out. If you haven't seen it yet though, you haven't gotten it, right? Because I technically don't have it yet either. What I did is went up here to my URL and you see this? I said make.preview. So I just took the old URL that was already there, right? So this is the URL that I typically am at and I just literally went right here and went right after the word make and I added in preview and hit enter. And this is how you get into the preview environment. No special things, you just boom, we're in the preview environment. Now notice up here in the top right, they can turn it on or off, yay. This right here, this is the Copilot piece. So if you haven't learned how to use Copilot, this is the same thing, right? And there's a video up there that will help you build your first app in Copilot. The only thing they changed was now they give you some default ones. So like if you're hey, I wanna build an app to manage inspections, you can click on that and then hit go and it'll drop you in here and it'll start to help you facilitate building out one of these. All right, so once again, we're not gonna walk through how to use it, but there it is, it's ready to go. And so if we just hit create app way down here in the bottom right under my face, then it's going to build us an app and we're gonna wait just a few seconds. So hang on. After like 30 seconds, it built me this lovely app. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through it, right? That's the other video. But what I wanted to make sure you understood though is there is a difference now. So it used to be when you did this whole co-pilot experience, you had the gallery and form and all this stuff here to work with, right? This is all responsive, yay. But there was also the other screen that had that co-pilot web part or web part component control, whatever we call those here. And that allowed you to interact with your data. That screen is gone now. If you want to add that back yourself, you could go here to new screen, just do a blank one. And then if you go up here to insert and just search for co-pilot, there it is. You can drop this on the screen. Then you would map it to your data source. So in this case, I made an inspections app, so I'm gonna map it to my inspections app. And then after a few seconds, not only is it ready to go, but look there, it's got the sample questions, right? So it knows your data, okay? So that's how you'd get back to that. But the real reason I'm showing you all this is not to go over something we've covered before, because that is not my goal. But here's the thing I need you to know. In a minute when I'm showing you all these other screens, and I say, hey, they create the new app, this is the new app, right? This is the thing all those other screens are going to create when I tell you that, right? So I wanted you to know that right, we're not gonna keep creating the screen over and over again. This is the app, the same app, okay? So we're done with this, right? We've got it, cool, it's responsive, it's got all your fields and stuff, you can customize it, it's just a power app. So let's go back. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say start with data. We're gonna click on here. Now you see three options or you might see four options depending on when you try this in your own environment. Mm, that's right, there's a mystery fourth option coming. There'll be a whole video on that one when it shows up, but not today. And so here you're gonna see we've got these things. These are all new, all three of these are new. And so you can either start with a blank table, existing table or connect to external data. All three of these choices, no matter which one you make, will spit out the new app that we just saw. So that means that if you like that app but you've always been annoyed you can only do it with Dataverse, look, you could connect to external data. So I could go over here, and so now I could build that new style app straight from one of my SharePoint lists, right? So this is new for us. We weren't able to do that before. They've got a new interface, but at the end of the day, it's the same thing, right? We'd be like, all right, what site do I want? I want Power Apps videos. And then as you all probably know, down here somewhere is my dear employees. There they are. So we could do that, click create app under my face, and it would make that new app style based on my SharePoint data. But you can only do the new app style for SharePoint, Excel data, or for SQL. So whereas, remember the traditional, the little skinny three screen app, 
That guy can only can be done for any tabular data source. Today, only these three can be built on the new app. There's another thing I want you to know here. So with Excel, here you can choose any of these different locations. So you can do both OneDrive for Business or any of your groups or your SharePoint sites. You could use the search. Like I've got hundreds of things to search through here. But remember, let's be honest, building an app where Excel is your back end, which is what this would do, never a good idea, right? There's a video up there for Excel is a terrible data source. I stand by that. So please don't build apps on top of Excel, but they did make it easier for you. Last but not least, over here from SQL, there's one nuance to this one as well. So from SQL over here, it's not immediately obvious, but most of you, if you use SQL, you have lots of SQL connections. How do I get to all of them? Hit the ellipses. They did their best to hide this. There are all of my SQL connections. So this is how I would find it, right? Like this was something someone had to show me how to find. So I wanted to help you guys out and make it easier, but that's where those are. Awesome, right? You can even add new connections at the bottom of here. So remember, all three of these, new app, cancel. So back to start with data. So that was this one. So select an existing table. This is going to be the same thing. So I'll make that new app. The only difference is that this is going to do it from one of your existing Dataverse tables, right? So if you're a Dataverse person, you can choose your Dataverse table, whoop, new app. So basically the same thing as the other one we just saw, but only for Dataverse gets its own bucket. Start with a blank table. This is totally new, but it's not, right? So if you've ever built a Dataverse table before, you know how to use this interface to you know, rename columns, add the different column types, kind of get it all in there. So this is just giving you the process of creating a new table. And then in the bottom right under my face again is create app, which would then create that new app style from this. So nothing profound here. It's just an easier way to get to things you already know how to do. So I'm not going to teach you how to do them. So let's cancel out of here. Okay. So now we got to start with data. Let's talk about start with a page design. And let's first say start with a page design. That is confusing, right? Like this has nothing to do with power pages. Several of my People I've talked to have been like, oh, what power page is what? No, it's just a bad, like it should say start with app design or start with screen design. So don't, don't get hung up on the word page here. Okay. So if you click here, so here's what's this is back to connecting the dots, right? That's my goal for you. So look, gallery connected to a table with a dataverse logo or gallery connected to external table. This is the same stuff we did on the other screen literally the same buttons. So don't like think these are something different. They're the same. The most important thing on this screen is my baby, right? I still just want to create a blank canvas app. I'm not a new user. I've been doing this since the beginning of time. And so this is where blank canvas apps still live, right? So tablet or phone, it's the only difference, right? You choose this, like, oh yeah, make me a new one. And we go. Now then down here, you're going to see, we got some other things, right? So view and form, blank page with navigation and dashboard, right? These three things, they create a model-driven app. Now, what's really cool is if you click on the little info icon, it does give you a visual and some details about what's here. So make sure you're clicking on those to look. But if you're not a model-driven app person, then these three things might not totally make sense to you. That's okay. Over here, then we have an image or Figma file. If we click on that, so this is start from an image or start from Figma. Neither of these has really went mainstream. Like they're interesting concepts, but both of them are still kind of yeah. So we don't really do a lot of that, but this is the same as the current home page, right? If we go to the regular create page, and then we just went to image or figment, right? That, that's those two. So we're not going to do anything with that. Then we have these three split screen sidebar and header main section footer. These are just what? These are just canvas app screens, right? If we go over to the canvas app interface, and so when you're over the canvas app, you do new screen here, right? Split screen sidebar header main or foot. I said that really bad. It's these three things, right? So that's all it's doing is we're just be starting an app from there instead of starting the app from blank. There is a little filter interface here, canvas app versus model driven app. You know, this stuff, like, I don't know. I, I would maybe like this one because that way it makes it very clear. These are the canvasy things that I can do, but either way you have some filters, nothing too exciting. Stay away from the word page and you're okay. Let's go back again. So then last but not least, we have start with an app template. Now, when you're over here, these four do, 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 are the exact same as these four, right? Dataverse, SharePoint, Excel, SQL. So these four things all just make that standard skinny three screen mobile app that we all started on. We all still love, right? So that's all those are. Then down here, you have the templates. Okay, now with the templates, these are obviously the same templates that are at the bottom of the create page. I'm not gonna show you that. But there's a couple of nuances here I wanna talk about. So first off, you might notice that like these three are grayed out for me. And if I hover, 
This option is disabled because sample apps are not installed in your environment. Well, that's not cool. How do I fix that? That I can help you with. What you're gonna do is you go up here, you need to go to the admin center. Now you're gonna to have to have the appropriate permissions to do this, right? You have to have environment level permissions. But if you do, you can go in here, you can go to environments. You're then going to need to find that environment. So for me, it's all the way at the bottom. We're gonna click on that. Then we're gonna to go to settings, data management. We're gonna span that out and we're gonna say sample data. So look, sample data is not installed on this system. Now, it took me some like walking me like a you know horse to water here. But if you look in the very far bottom right, like under my face, I just moved it. Install sample data is this big blue button down at the bottom. So that, if I click on that, that would add the sample data into this Dataverse environment. And then all of a sudden over here, these three would be lit up. So I point this out to you because what you're going to find is when you go into different environments, you're going to see different things. So it might be like one user's environment has this lit up, other one doesn't, and you wouldn't know why. Thank you, Shane. You now know why. Other thing that's really a little weird right now. So if you go down here, like if I go to invoice management, if I hover over it, it says this option is disabled because it requires a premium license. But what? So what it's doing right now is it's checking, well, what I'm pretty sure it's doing, is it's checking to see, do I have a premium license? I do not have a per user license assigned to me, so I don't, so it's not showing up. So as of right now, we can't use this interface because it's trying to keep people from doing things they don't have access to do. And so I don't have a premium license here. I, Microsoft is working on, I think this will change, but just in case you're seeing that, it doesn't think that I can do a premium app. It's wrong, but <laughs> it doesn't think I can. So another common issue that we're running into, let's go back over here for a second. Let's go back to like start with a page design. So if I was in here, right, right now everything works. What happens if I switch to an environment that doesn't have Dataverse? So let's switch over here to my environments. And so this particular environment, I do not have Dataverse. So you notice right away that everything that is Dataverse centric, all the model driven app stuff and the connect to Dataverse table, it's all gone. Now, right now I see the message switch to your developer environment. So what it's doing is it is checking and it says, hey, Shane has access to developer environment, let's switch to that. And so if I click on that, it's going to take me, be careful, not to my developer environment per se, but the first one that I have access to. And so in this case, it's Aubrey's. Miss, Miss Aubrey has given me, I have access to hers, I have access to all of them. And so it jumped me to her developer environment. So keep that in mind, be careful with this, right? So switch to your developer environment. And once again, Microsoft is thinking about this. Uh, you know, this is still very, very, very fresh. So I'm guessing that that'll have a different experience soon. But right now I need you to be heads up. You know, and it's the same thing. Like if we go back here, start with data. And so, oh, we're in an Aubrey's environment. Let's switch back to mine. And so once again, I get this. Now, this is going to switch to my developer environment. If you don't have a developer environment, then the message you're gonna see, I'm gonna show you a screenshot, hold on. And so I'm gonna see this message, right? So it would say, create your own environment. If your user is in this interface and they are trying to use a Dataverse feature and they don't have Dataverse available, but they have the ability to create a developer environment, then they're gonna see this button up here for create your own environment. And then that would automatically provision them a developer environment. Very cool. If they are in an environment where they do not have Dataverse, and they do not have the ability to do a developer environment because it's been disabled, then they're going to see this message. Unable to create your environment with Dataverse, contract administrator for help, right? And so that's probably you, the administrator, so that's why I wanted you to know that this was going to be coming, right? So this would be, this means they don't have access to Dataverse, and they don't have the ability to create a developer environment, right? This is the value I'm hoping to add in your life. It's telling you what these messages are, what these interfaces are going to be going in. Okay, let's close out of that. All right, let's switch back to my environment. And so you can see right now that it's like, hey, you want to create one? So it's, it's they're trying to have different interfaces to encourage people to create these environments. So we're going to switch back to mine. Now I don't have one. And so, or I mean, I, now I'm in an environment where Dataverse is, so no big deal. Um, You know, then down here, you've got your apps, you got some learning, you can figure all that out for yourself. But there you go. So there is a walkthrough of these interfaces and more importantly, the weird things that you might encounter. Also keep in mind that these just rolled out or they are just rolling out. So Microsoft is going to, you know, be changing them a little bit here, a little bit there, but you know, they are really targeted at those new makers. So they should always be pretty simple to understand. You just need to be on hand to help them understand, hey, why am I seeing these different weird behaviors? 
Also remember, if you really just don't like this, I don't know why you wouldn't like this, but if you didn't, you could always just say, try the new Power Apps, turn that off. This would just give you back the regular experience that you're expecting. Also, if we turn it back on. Also keep in mind that as of today, right, the create screen is the way it's always been. So if all of that overwhelmed you, no big deal. Jump over to create, and then you can just do things the ways you've always done it. All the templates are already over here, right? So it's it's pretty, um, it's just the way you've always left it. Questions, comments, ideas, leave them below, right? There's a lot of cool stuff coming out uh, this week. So hopefully I will see you again tomorrow where I've got something that I can't tell you about, but I will tell you about tomorrow. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.